Hey everyone and welcome back to my next video. Create just dropped a new update, Create 0.5, the full Steam update. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, before I officially begin, I want to go ahead and mention that tomorrow I'm going to drop a video diving into how to fully create the train. Uh, everything that you could ever do with all of the trains inside of this update will be in tomorrow's video because it's going to be a super long video. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a basic train that you can kind of mess with and still transport items and do things like that. But tomorrow we'll go through everything and anything about that uh, so that's my little disclaimer but to start off the very first brand new item is the display board now the display board is basically a gigantic sign that allows us to display different types of information with a little bit of automation inside of it as well now what's really cool is that we can go ahead and use a name tag so something we would go ahead and place inside of an anvil to put some text on it and then we can right click on this display board to go ahead and place down text. Uh, this is really cool because you can also use a piece of dye to go ahead and dye this text or your bare hand to go ahead and remove this text. So great for just putting up some signage inside of like a main lobby or something like that, that you're able to go ahead and customize to whatever you would like. Now we're also able to use something called a display link that allows us to basically display uh, information that's gonna change over time. So what I mean by that is that we could take this display link, right click on our display board, and then place it on like a depot, a speedometer, or a cuckoo clock, and it will display the information based off of that block. So you can see on this depot, if I place down an anvil, in just a few seconds, you'll see that the, it says now names colon anvil. Now, if we go ahead and place down a motor on this cuckoo clock or the speedometer, in a few seconds, it will actually display the exact RPMs that the speedometer is set to, and also the exact time of day that is currently set. Now, if we right click on these display links, you can customize the information to your liking. So you can see here, I can go ahead and fix my typo by changing this to name, and it will change to name colon anvil. Or I can go ahead and select the certain line that I want to set it to. So you can see I can erase the second line, set it to the third line where I've actually made some color, as well as you can change all different information based off of the type of information or the type of block that it's set to. Also with this display link, it doesn't only work on display boards. You can also use it on signs. You can see if I put down a dark oak sapling, it will actually change to name colon dark oak on this sign. The next gigantic brand new thing that is inside of this game is Steam Engines. Now, Steam Engines are now the late game power source for the Create mod, and all it takes is a bunch of campfires placed below a fluid tank. All of these campfires can be blaze burners as well, which is worth noting. And inside of this fluid tank has to have uh, some water. So basically boiling water using the steam for power. Now, uh, I've just hooked up to a fluid tank. You'd have to hook it up to a lake or something like that. And then off of this fluid tank, you would place down these steam engines and then just a shaft off of it. And that will create this moving, basically steam engine and it turns into a powered shaft that generates some power for us. Something that's worth noting is that if you have your fluid tank three high, that means you can have three full powered steam engines. So if you make this five, you could have five. If you make it one, you can have one. So just kind of keep that in mind. You could use those glasses or the goggles to go ahead and tell the speed as well, uh, just to kind of help you out. Also another new item called the steam whistle. This will go ahead and blow as soon as the fluid tank is at max uh, capacity of steam. And if you go ahead and use a lever next to it, you can flick it and it will make a sound as soon as it's at full capacity. What's really cool is that you can use a wrench to cycle through three different sounds. Uh, so depending on how annoying you want the sound to be, you could go ahead and select that. Our next brand new thing is the metal girders. Metal girders are kind of more of a cosmetic thing, but I figured it was worth pointing out that they work really well with the train tracks, as I'm about to show in a few seconds, as well as you do have the ability to put a shaft through them. So just kind of keep that in mind. There's also a train casing. Definitely it could be used for cosmetics, but it's also a big building block and it's also used for all of the train creation that I'm about to cover in a few seconds. Speaking of trains, we can now begin talking about like train tracks. Pretty self-explanatory, allows us to drive trains on there, but a nice little kind of neat thing to think about is that when you right click a train track, you can right click again, and it will actually drag out the train track depending on how you would like your train track to go. You can also use this for turns. It will tell you as soon as it's a perfect turn and allow you to place down a train track that basically allows it to turn. What's also really cool is that train tracks can automatically start to go up hills. And then if you also take a block such as this girder and place it in your offhand, it will actually build the girders or whatever block is in your offhand as kind of like rails below your uh, actual train tracks. Pretty cool for kind of building something like this where we have two different trains, one going under and one going overneath, and you want some type of platform. And that works for slabs, blocks, as well as, of course, the girders and stuff like that that are in this game. 
Another amazing cool addition is that trains will also be able to go into the nether and continue to drive into the other dimension. So as you can see, the train track goes right through and immediately goes right into the nether. And it will also auto place this as long as the dimensions already generated as you bring the train track to there. So the next thing I'm gonna dive into is basically how to make a train. It's gonna be super basic. Once again, tomorrow I'm gonna to drop a full video diving into all the details, but this will allow you to make a train today that will drive around, collect items, such and such. Uh, pretty basic, actually. So all you need to do is place down some train track, and you're gonna go ahead and grab this new item called the train station. So this is actually gonna make a train station for you. You're gonna look at the track and keep in mind which way the arrow is facing. That's the way your train is gonna drive. So we'll go ahead and say in this direction, We'll go ahead and right click, place down the train station, and then we're going to right click on this train station. At the top, you can go ahead and not, uh, name it, so we could call it Rocket 14's train station. And then we can go ahead and click create new train. Now, once we do that, we're going to get this blue color on the train track, so we're going to take a train casing, and we're going to go ahead and right click. Now, that's going to turn right into a small bogey. It's basically an area for basically wheels for the train. And then you can also look behind it. You'll see more blue color depending on how long your track is. And that allows us to place down multiple more casings for multiple more sets of wheels or basically train cars. Once we do that, we got to go ahead and use some blocks to build some type of platform. Uh, so we can see as I place it right around in this area, we're gonna now made a platform. And we're also going to want to place down train controls. This allows us to basically drive the train. Now you can only you can put down just one of them on your train that will allow you to drive in one single direction or like this if you put them on both sides you can go in both directions now on the track. Last but not least you're going to want to make sure that everything is glued to your train so you can see if I go ahead and glue these guys the train controls and those blocks below that and also glue, glue this right to that platform right there our entire train is now glued together and is now one object. Once we do that, we should look at the train uh, station right here. You should see the amount of bogies that you have created. So those are the train casings that you've placed down and turned into those wheels. We have two, so we're good to go. We'll click assemble train. If you get any error, it will explain exactly what you did wrong. But for us, we didn't get any error, so we're good to go. We can name our train. So we'll call it Rocket 14's train. Hit the check mark. And you know you've done this correct if you can't actually highlight any of the blocks. That's because it's now turned all into one single object. Now, if we right click on the train controls, it's going to say now controlling Rocket 14's train. So we can use W to move forward. We can use S to move backwards. You'll see the XP bar showing the speed of your train. One thing that's worth noting is you've basically built a very basic train that allows you to drive around. Now, if you want to go ahead and power up your train, you're going to want to go ahead and put down a chest or a barrel, something with a fuel source inside of it, and it will deplete that fuel source as it drives. One other kind of good note is that an item vault will not have its items depleted. So if you want to go ahead and transport tons of logs throughout an entire Minecraft world, you could totally do that. You can also go ahead and glue seats to it so that you can go ahead and sit down and drive and etc, etc. It's basically all up to you now. The next couple blocks I want to go ahead and cover is going to be all covered kind of at once. And then we'll go ahead and drive a train around it and activate all the blocks at once. So the very first thing I want to cover is an ability to allow mobs to drive trains for you. I know, sounds ridiculous, right? So basically, if we use a train schedule, this allows us to automate our train. Now, if we right click, it's going to look really complicated. But all this is saying is make the train go to 100%. So drive it as fast as you possibly can. Go to the station that's called my station, wait five ticks. And then once again, put the throttle to 100% and send it. So for us, we're going to go around in a circle and it's going to stop at this train station and continue. Now, once you've done this train schedule, you can go ahead and right click on a mob that's sitting inside of a seat and in front of train controls, and that will make that mob go ahead and do it for you. So if you wanted to make an army of parrots around your world drive trains for you, you could do that now. Now, before we do that, I want to go ahead and uh, talk about some other different objects or blocks that we have as well. The very first thing is we have train observers. This acts just as a regular observer, except it's attached to the train track, as you can see. And once the train goes through it, it will go ahead and send out a redstone signal. Now, a regular train observer, uh, if it does not have a filter set to it, will send a redstone signal as soon as any train goes across the train track. As opposed to if you set a filter to, let's say, a water bucket, it will check the train to see if it has a water bucket. If it does, it will then send a redstone signal. 
Now, a block that we're going to talk about a ton tomorrow is the train signal. Now, our train signal is an ability to basically be like a uh, stoplight for trains. So if we have multiple trains going on different tracks, all going to collide in a certain area, it would stop certain trains, let other trains go, and so on and so on. You're able to use a red Nixie tube to attach it to it, and that will give some type of signaling basically towards it. But all of this will probably be covered a little bit more tomorrow because of how advanced this gets really quickly. But before we leave this little section, if we go ahead and right click the train schedule onto our parent, you'll see he gets a little conductor hat. He'll begin to drive. You'll see our lights lit up right over there. He'll go over to our train station. He'll slow down. He'll stop. The flag goes up and he successfully stopped at the train station. There's a couple other new items that have been added into the game. The very first one is the placard. It's basically like an item frame with a little bit more of a unique addition. So if we place an item inside of the placard and we right click, it will actually give a redstone signal if it's the same item that is inside of the placard as is inside of your hand. There's also three new ladders. There's an andesite ladder, a brass ladder, and a copper ladder, all of which are going to be really cool designs for the trains. And speaking of trains, there's also now a train door and a train trap door. As you can see with the train door, it slides, and that also works with the new doors that are the framed glass door and the trap door. You can now have a sliding glass door inside of your world. There's also a bunch of new rose quartz blocks. There's also a bunch of new rose quartz blocks. The first two are decorative, so there is a block of rose quartz and in rose quartz tiles. And the third one is the rose quartz lamps. What's really unique about this is if you send it a redstone signal, it will hold its redstone signal forever. Kind of unique. I don't know when I'd use this, but I'm sure the redstoners out there will know. You can also use kind of a cool little unique redstone technique by putting three different rose quartz lamps down or multiple rose quartz lamps, and they will fight over the redstone signal. So if you place one, it will remove it from the other ones, or there won't be any of them lit up all at the same time. So maybe there could be a really cool way of like building like a calculator or something like that with multiple redstone lamps fighting all for uh, a certain light to make a certain number appear or something like that. There's also a new item called sturdy, uh, sturdy sheets. Sturdy sheets are used to craft train schedules and train casings, as you can see right from here. Uh, a brass casing plus a sturdy sheet equals a train casing. And you can see crafting a sturdy sheets and paper equals four train schedules. Also a pretty big removal is furnace engines. They're no longer inside of the game. Uh, definitely did not expect that one, but uh, I guess it kind of makes sense. We now have steam engines, so furnace engines are kind of no longer needed. But this is now kind of our late game power source is the steam engine. Also worth noting, all of the casing recipes have now been changed. You can see they're all using deployers now, such as logs plus copper equals a copper casing and so on and so on. And last but not least, pulse repeaters and pulse extenders. Now go ahead and invert if you go ahead and right click on them. And that is pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. There are hundreds of more changes that I have not listed inside of this, but they were all pretty minor to my knowledge. If I change my mind or if someone else disagrees with me, let me know in the comments and I'll put a pinned comment with all of the different changes that I maybe have missed inside of this video. Tomorrow, I'll go ahead and cover all of the train knowledge that you need to know. So if you're interested in that video, make sure to subscribe. I'll go ahead and drop it tomorrow. And other than that, I'll go ahead and leave down below the GitHub changes link so you can see everything that has possibly changed uh, inside of the update down below. Uh, but without that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.